Them documents are going to show, and they're going to be able to prove, because that was his whole plan, is to get them documents brought into court so that they can't throw them out and show the, the treasonous acts that they've been doing. So you think Trump hid documents in Mar-a-Lago so that those documents could be entered into the court? Yes. Right? Interesting. Yes. I haven't heard that one. Well, if they're going to charge Trump, why aren't they going to charge Biden? For what? For all the documents that he had in the garage, like, in his pool house, in his bathroom. He had like one document, and he gave it immediately to authorities. Trump kept it for over a year, the documents that he had, the boxes. It's his presidential executive right. No, these were documents that he was not supposed to have. What's up, everybody? Major Retire Richard Ojeda here. And in a comical yet scathing encounter that could have been scripted by the writers of a sitcom, Journalist Adam Mockler from Occupy Democrats found himself thrust into a bizarre world of a Trump loyalist outside of a rally. He's Trump kept it for over a year, the documents that he had, the boxes. his presidential executive right. No, these were documents that he was not supposed to have. Though. Do you know that? Yeah, that's why they're no, being... That's why they're I don't being. believe that. I don't believe that. I think there were documents that he had to be able to prove what's going on. So if Trump is in jail... Next election, do you still vote for him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll even send him 50 bucks for his bond. Damn. Yep. He's a billionaire, though. You could give him money? Oh, yeah. This character, if one could call him that, resembled nothing short of a walking, talking jackaloon straight out of a twisted beachside tale. Everybody, everybody, go to your polls. Watch your polls. No more of these stupid boxes that we can all bring a suitcase of ballots in. We've seen it on videos. Here's the thing with the videos. You know how oftentimes Democrats can take videos out of context? Exactly. So sometimes it feels like Republicans did the exact same thing. Have you ever seen the clip of the ballot boxes being slid out from under the table? Yes. Do you remember what happened when they brought that to court? No, I do not. They brought that to court, and right when the judge looked at the full footage of the day, all 12 hours of what happened, he realized that those ballots were placed earlier that day by the Republican and Democrat poll worker. As Mockler attempted to engage in rational discourse, the Trump loyalists responded with a barrage of loud, nonsensical ramblings, as if trying to drown out the very concept of coherent thought. And yet, amidst the verbal diarrhea spewing forth from this walking embodiment of cognitive dissonance, Mockler managed to discern the underlying hypocrisy of the MAGA cult. The problem arises when you take these five second clips and you try to use that as evidence. And when you look at all 12 hours, you realize the evidence is nullified. So I'm just wondering, have you ever thought of it? Like, Well, I have, but I also watched the movie 2000 Mules. I've seen 2000 Mules too. And a lot of the evidence in there is just regurgitated stuff from the court cases that Trump lost. But we know that Biden didn't get over 2 million votes. These self-proclaimed experts fancied themselves as arbiters of truth while simultaneously peddling falsehoods with the fervor of a snake oil salesman at a county fair. They championed executive privilege for Donald Trump, turning a blind eye to his mishandling of classified information while hypocritically decrying it for anyone who dared oppose their dear leader. With a masterful blend of humor and critique, Adam Mockler exposed the willful ignorance and undereducation of these Trump faithful who eagerly lapped up crackpot theories like parched desert wanderers stumbling upon an oasis of lunacy. They mirrored their idol's refusal to admit fault, blindly following his lead with all the fervor of a cultist in the throes of a religious fit. And yet, amidst the absurdity of it all, Mockler somehow managed to maintain his composure, like a seasoned sailor navigating the choppy waters of insanity with nothing but a wry smile and well-timed quip. Kudos to Mockler for bravely shining a light on the pitiful state of Trump's followers, proving that even in the midst of chaos, there's humor to be found in the folly of blind allegiance. So as we bid farewell to the Trump loyalists, we can't help but suggest that perhaps it's time for him to, to find his way back to Lake Moonshine, where he can get lost in the murky depths of his own delusions once more. I don't believe that. After all, in a world where arrogance masquerades as wisdom, a little dose of humility might just be the compass needed to navigate the foggy shores of reality. And that is an absolute fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.